I've never been the one that play your politics up with throwing them parliaments back to abolish bonnet just don't acknowledge this single effect is the one that gets my sports videos the most noticed online. It is the one that has proven to be the most successful for me to this point in my career as a sports videographer. And today, I'm gonna to teach you exactly how to do it. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Peter Sorellas. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports events and commercial work. And today I'm going to teach you this super cool stabilization effect that I get asked about all the time and I get requested for tutorials on this constantly. So now you are going to know exactly how to do it. This gets my work noticed like crazy. People just love this stabilization effect in sports videos and I have not made a video about it yet somehow, even though it is basically a trademark in all of my work. This video was popularized by the Beats by Drake commercial that you may have seen, but I'm gonna show you how you can do this super easily and super simply right inside of After Effects. No plugins, you don't need to go into Mocha. This is gonna be super straightforward but I've been talking for long enough, so let's get into the program. So we are here in After Effects. I've loaded up this clip. Let's move to the composition window so you can see what we are working with. We have a 1080 by 1350 timeline right here. This is formatted for Instagram. I'll go into my composition settings and show you real quick. So we have 1080 by 1350, 23.976 frames per second. The duration is just set long so that the clip doesn't get cut off. So we need to stabilize this clip, but first we need to make sure that it actually fits the dimensions for Instagram. So we're gonna scale it up. We need to scale this clip up to 125 to make it fit the dimensions. As we track this, you'll see why we have to scale it up even more later. So if you can shoot this type of footage in 4K, that is preferable. This clip is in 1080, but it's also just for demonstration purposes. So I don't mind too much. Now we are gonna be doing some motion tracking and we wanna motion track on a full resolution so that After Effects can see the image as clearly as possible. So we'll set our resolution to full and we're going to start motion tracking. So let's just punch in here a little and then we're going to come to the tracker panel with our layer selected. We're going to hit stabilize motion since we're gonna be stabilizing the motion of this clip and now we're in the layers panel. So we're going to go and zoom into the player here. We'll make sure that this is set to full. Yes, it is and we're going to find a point that we can track in this clip. Now you generally want to track a point in the shot that's on the object that you want the image to be centered around and that has a lot of contrast. But when you're filming in an unpredictable environment like a sporting event, you can't always find this point. What I found to be very consistent though is to use a player's eyeball as a tracking point. It is pure white surrounded by pure black as with the pupil and that makes for a really easy point to track and then it stabilizes the motion around the player's head, which is usually a pretty effective way to stabilize. So we're going to place this tracking point around this player's eye. This eye is gonna be visible for the whole shot because he is traveling from the left of the screen to the right of the screen facing this way. So we're gonna put this first box around his eye to signify the point that we wanna track. And this bigger box here tells us the difference between this point in one frame and this point in the next frame. So After Effects is gonna search this bigger box to find his eyeball in the next frame. Now that we've got this track point set on his eyeball, we're gonna make sure position is enabled after we've hit stabilize motion. And now we're just going to track forward one frame to see if it sticks, and it does. So we're gonna track forward another frame and another and another. If you feel comfortable, you can just hit this button and track forward a bunch of frames, but I see the ball is about to come up and get in the way and now we're not gonna be able to track. So here the ball has gotten in the way of this player. So now we need to manually guess where his eye approximately should be. This doesn't need to be the most accurate thing in the world, but we want to be close. So we're gonna go like that. His eye is still, his ball is still in the way of his eye. So we're just going to keep guessing for a couple of more frames of where his eye should be. Let's make this into a more of a smooth looking curve. Oh, and there's his eye. That is perfect. We're gonna make this into a curve so that the motion doesn't seem too jittery. And we're just gonna keep on tracking this along one frame at a time. Now I'm gonna try tracking a few frames forward just to show you that. So we'll track a few frames and there you can see that it tracked for a couple frames and then the tracking point got lost. So now we will go back and we're gonna fix this. We're gonna open the tracker here. We're going to go back along by holding command and the left arrow to the point where the tracker is on his eye, right there. After this point, we lose it. So let's open the track point. We're going to take everything after that point and we're just gonna delete it. Now that stuff's all gone and we can go back to manually tracking this through just like this. It is a little slower than I would have liked for a tutorial. 
for a long shot like this. So I'm gonna speed through the rest of this and I will see you when this motion is all captured. All right, now we've gotten to the end of our track here. You can see that his whole head actually turned and we totally lost his eye. So for these last few frames here, I actually went into position the marker where his eye would be on the other side of his head. Again, this is just guessing. This wasn't the best shot to apply this effect for because you didn't have one point that was consistent that you could track through the entire time. But that's why I wanted to do this shot. So I can show you that even if you don't have a firm tracking point and you end up doing a lot of manual tracking and guessing, you can still achieve this effect. It's not limited to just the shots that are very simple, straightforward, and easy to track. Fortunately for us, we have all these tracking points down and they're all shown right down here under our track point on the feature center. So now we can go to edit target. We wanna make sure that the target is set to the layer that we have here. And it is, it's the only layer in our composition. So this is the name of our layer. But if you wanted to ever change the target, you would just go like this and select the layer that you want to apply the tracking data to. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're going to hit apply. And then you're going to get this little thing that says motion tracker, apply options, X and Y, just click okay. And now you can see that our anchor point has taken all the properties of this feature center. And when we play this back now, the clip starts to move around and we get it following the guy's head. But we have a problem here where although this player's head is staying in the center of the frame, we're getting these blank spots at the top and the bottom of the frame. And like we don't want that stuff. So the only option here to get rid of that, I think there's a couple options here to get rid of that technically. But the option that I like using most often is to scale the clip up. This is why I said shoot in 4K if you can. If you have like a new Sony A7S III or something and shooting in 4K 120, then this effect is your dream. But I'm shooting this in 1080 and it's going on Instagram and you're gonna get super compressed anyways. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna scale up this 1080 footage and we will make this effect work. So let's go to where we have this effect the most out of place and we're just going to start scaling up. We'll hit hold shift P to open the position as well. Now you have scale and position. Now we're just gonna tweak this a little bit with the scale and the position to get it so that it is covering the frame. So now I've tracked this through and we mostly have a good track now, but I've decided that I don't want this end part here to be stabilized because you can see that the clip gets way off the frame and is mostly not in frame anymore. And I would rather just not stabilize that because his head isn't really in a consistent spot. When you're filming this type of stuff, you want to film it so that the item that you're going to be tracking mostly stays around the center of the frame. That way you don't need to crop in as much because it's already pretty centered. When you have a shot like this where the player's head is moving around a lot, in this case he jumped for a dunk and his head went way up, that's going to make the frame go way up with the player's head. That creates this effect that we have right here. So if we want to drop some of these stabilization keyframes to avoid this, then we can just click U. That brings up everything that we've got keyframed right now. And we just go to the last point where we have him on the screen, which is right here. And now we're going to delete everything before this. Just click delete like that. And now we're going to hold at that position as the player goes up to dunk it. And we're going to get that dunk in the frame. So now if we play this back, we're stabilized all the way to this point and then he dunks. We're stabilized, we're stabilized, we're stabilized. Here the stabilization stops and the player goes up and throws down the dunk. And I think that works really well. It's kind of nice to stop this stabilization effect on a point of emphasis like a dunk because then it draws more attention to that thing since there is a change in pace. So I actually think that for this clip, having stabilization all the way through to the dunk and then letting the dunk happen in a more natural way works pretty well. And it also makes our clip not as low res which I'm all for. So one other thing that we can do to this clip if we want now is enable or disable motion blur. You can see that I've already got motion blur enabled, which is how we get this, these lines and this jittery effect going through it. So we've got like all this blurriness that's happening right in here. And that's because we have this button, which is motion blur enabled and this button, which is motion blur for the entire composition also enabled. I'm gonna trim our composition down a little bit just so that we can actually play this clip in a loop. And when you play this, you can see we have motion blur. Now, if you want to get rid of motion blur, this can give us a different effect. I wouldn't say that having motion blur on or off is better or worse. It just depends on the look that you're going for. So I'll show you both. So let's turn motion blur off and you can see immediately that those lines just went away. And now when we play this clip through, his head is still centered, but we don't have that jitteriness. We don't have the loss of focus element there, 
we just have stabilization and then the stabilization comes off and the player dunks. It's two different looks, but they're both effective. And this clip is done. It's fully stabilized. And this is an effect that although it's pretty easy to do, and if I wasn't talking through it the whole time, I could probably do this in a couple minutes. It's something that's not done very often. Personally, when I make a sports video, like especially a basketball workout video, I'm pretty much bringing the entire thing into After Effects and going through and doing effects like this stabilization to sometimes almost every shot that I can because I just think it is so effective and I've seen so much success in mixtapes that have this effect in them. Now you know how to do this effect too and I hope that you use it well. If you like this video, then please make sure to subscribe because I release helpful videos and tutorials like this on a regular basis and I would love to have you around so that we can learn together. And let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. If there was something that I missed or you aren't totally clear on something, then just drop it down there and I'll get back to you ASAP. And if you wanna actually see full bodies of work that I've done that have this effect in them, then go check out my Instagram. I post a lot of my finished work there and my DMs are always open so you can hit me up if you want. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace out. Woo! We done, baby!